Could everyone please go to page 42? This will be like notes because this is important skills going forward into trig. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll do this Monday. I mean tomorrow. Go straight to your review, please. There are the first nine answers highlighted. Every question is worth one. Give yourself a mark out of nine. If you don't understand what I did there to show you, then ask. What do you mean, how did I get nine? Which, oh, how did I get, how did I get the answer to number nine? Yes, okay. 109 ounces, I need pounds, right? So it's going to be 109 ounces times, I want pounds over ounces. So it's one pound over 16. So 109 divided by 16 got me six with some left over. The remainder was 13 ounces. Because I needed to get up to 109. Six pounds is 96 ounces. I need to get up to 109. There's the leftovers. Everybody good? This is being recorded, so do not bother copying it down. I recognize I forgot to walk around to see how much you have done. So you're on your honor. I will also know when you write your test, if you tell me you got 30 out of 30 on this and got 5 out of 40 on your test, I will know somewhere along the line you're a liar. Everybody good? There are the next two. So, Billy is painting the walls, which are four by three by two, because there's two walls, three by three by two, because there's two walls, and then all of that needs to be times three, because he's doing three, co three coats. So it is 24 plus 18, which is 42. 42 times three is 126 meters squared. One liter of paint will do 12 square meters. So I divide by 12 and I get 10.5 cans. Can I buy half a can of paint? Yes or no? No. So what do I need? I need 11 cans. That's out of two marks. One for knowing how much to paint and one for figuring this out. If you screwed up how much to paint, like you forgot to multiply by three, take away a half a mark. Making that whole first page out of 11 and 2 out of 13. Any questions? Going once, going twice, going thrice. Okay. Page over. Surface area and volume. Well, for surface area, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, and then plus the bottom. So it's 5 times 20 times 2. That covers the top two of them. 4 times 20 times 2. That covers the sides. I should do this in different colors. That will make it easier. 4 times 20 times 2. Then this one is 8 by 4. 
So it's 8 by 4 by 2. And then this one. There's a couple of ways you could do this. I would say that because that is a triangle, there's another one on the back, it's going to make a square, right? Because this is also right there. So 5 by 5, making that 5 by 5 by 2. And then I got to add the bottom, which is 20 by 8. So all I do is add all that up. Uh, that's 200. That's uh, 8 times 20 is 160. 8 times 8 is 64. The green one is 50. And 20 times 8 is 160. And you add it all up to get 4. 6 and 6 is 12, seven and 6 is 18, and 5 is 23. Carry the 2, 2, 4, something around 634, and I would give you full credit. With the triangles, you said you count them as a square, but then you again made that double, so that would be... Oh, I did double it, didn't I? Sorry, no double there. So this should have been 25, thank you, 25, which makes for... Nine, six, 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 oh, nine, or something around there. Takanari made a point there that the drawing is screwed up. This cannot be a 90. I made this drawing from something else. I cut and pasted it together, and I forgot to erase that 90. It's impossible for that to be a 90 degrees. But if you did something like this, you can have the full mark available to you. Everybody cool? And volume, since it's a prism, it's the area of the base. Because the base is the shape that repeats times the height. So if you can find this area, multiply by 20, you get it. And the green area is 8 by 4. And 12 and a half, right? Because it's 5 by 5. 32 plus 12 and a half is 44.5 times 20. And that would get you the volume, which I can't do in my head. Oh, yeah, sure I can. 44.5 times 2 is 89. Ah. Eight nine. Duh, I was right. Um, I'm gonna say these are worth two each. So you decide how well you did to get up to the total there of four. This one, I gave you a trick to solving this. If you do the pr whole surface area, but you minus 9 times 2 times 2, you will get the surface area. So it was 2, 8 by 18 plus 4 by 18 plus 8 by 4 minus 9 times 4 minus 36. And that gets you the right answer. Four sixty. And then volume, there's two things you could do. You could do the whole thing minus this part, or you could find this area, because that's the base, and multiply it by 8. That's what I would do. So that is 4 by 9, and this is 2 by 9 which is 36 and 18, which is 54 times 8. 
which is 432. Again, each are out of two for a total out of four. I only wanted surface area here. Two hundred pi or six twenty eight point three out of two, making that page out of ten. This was bonus. I'll come back to it if we have time. Service area of a cone. A cone looks like this. But I don't care too much if you didn't draw the net. Surface area is 2 pi, not 2, you dummy head. Pi r squared plus pi r slant. You had an r, you had a slant. Is 324 pi plus 540 pi, which is, I think, yeah, 540 pi. So that's 864 pi or 27, 2714.3 out of 2. Volume of a sphere, 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. 4 pi 28 cubed divided by 3. And it's something like 91,000. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, it is. Ninety one thousand nine fifty two for volume point three and surface area four pi r squared four pi times twenty eight squared nine thousand eight hundred and fifty two out of four. Making the whole thing out of 6 and 10 is 16 and 13. Making the whole thing out of 29. Now listen to me and listen to me closely. Tomorrow, on your test, when you write it, you are going to put your name and this score out of 29. Does everybody understand? Okay, you're going to be putting two pieces of information on your test tomorrow. Your name and this score. Everybody got it? All right. Now, listen. We still have 25 minutes. You want your quiz back, and I want to go over it. If there is still time after that, I want to look at page 42, because it's a good lead-in. It's a good extra practice for tomorrow's test, and it's a good help for moving into trig. Okay. I will bring your quizzes around now. The number one mistake on this quiz is a great many of you do not know what the word exterior means. Indeed, it's way back there. Tirax on the way.
instead basically you have to shake just this little one down. All right, and we're back. That was enough time for you to talk to your neighbors and complain about your quizzes. We are back to paying attention. The next unit we are doing is trig. A big part of trig is the ability to do algebra. If you cannot do algebra, you will not have success going forward in the math class. You must be able to do algebra. So before I remind you of how to do algebra with some of our complicated uh, formulas, let's just remind ourselves how we do easy algebra. 2x plus 7 equals 4x plus 1. If you see algebra... If you see any mathematical equation with a letter in it, what's your job? Get the letter by itself, right? So what would you do first with this question? You'd combine some like terms. I see some X's here and some X's here. So I got to combine them, right? Which means one of them has to move. Does it matter which one I move? No. I like to keep my coefficients positive. So when I move that 2 over here, what happens to it as a positive number? It becomes negative 2x. Now I have 4x's and negative 2x's. How many x's is that? 2x plus 1 equals 7. Now, I got some more like terms to get. I got 7 and 1. I got to get rid of this 1. It's got to come over here. What's going to happen to it? Minus 1. So now I have 6 equals 2x. What is the last step? Divide by the coefficient. So x equals 3. Can everybody do basic algebra? Because it's going to be real hard. If you were in the ninth grade last year and you are a little dodgy on your algebra, go home and Google algebra. If you have finished the 10th grade and you are still dodgy on your al algebra, go home and Google algebra. Because you cannot go further than the 10th grade with anything better than, if you're lucky, a C- minus. if you cannot do algebra. And when I say do algebra, I mean do algebra in your sleep. I don't mean you can figure it out if somebody puts a gun to your head. I mean you kick its ass from here to next Tuesday. Does everybody understand? You need to be good at algebra. So let's go to this very next question. Yes. Surface area of a cone. Why is that good? Why is that good? Okay. Okay. Surface area of a cone, and I know the radius. What is the surface area of a cone? 
pi r squared plus pi r slant equals surface area. Now, what do I know here? I know the surface area is what? 1,200. Do I know anything over here? I know the radius. Pi, the radius is 5 squared plus pi times 5 times s. What is the thing I need to isolate? S. So let's tidy this up. What is 5 squared? 25 pi plus 5 pi s equals 1,200. What has to move? I, I am eventually going to have to get rid of 5 because I need s by itself. What else am I going to have to get rid of? I'm going to have to get rid of pi. What else am I going to have to get rid of? What else am I going to have to get rid of? The 25 pi. If my job is to get s by itself at the very, very end, should I start at s or should I work towards s? Work towards s. So what's the farthest thing away from s right now? 25 pi. So I better move that away from s, correct? What happens to it when it comes over here? It becomes negative. So I'm going to have 5 pi s equals 1,200 minus 25 pi. Right? Excellent. Now, how do I get rid of 5 times pi times s? What did I do right here to get rid of the 2? I divided it by 2. So what do I need to do here to get rid of the 5 and the pi? Divide by 5 pi. If I divide this side by 5 pi, what do I have to do to this side? Divide it by 5 pi. And S now equals this. And you can punch that into your calculator to get your S. I'm not going to do any calculator work. Because calculator work isn't what is important here. The algebra is. Is everybody good? It is being recorded. You can watch it again later. The volume of a cylinder and the height. Volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. What do I know in that equation right now? Do I know the volume? Yes. What is it? 500 equals pi. Do I know the r? Nope. r squared times, do I know the h? Yes. What is it? 20. So now I have to get r by itself, correct? Yes. How do I get rid of this times 20? Divide. I divide by 20. How do I get rid of this times pi? I divide by pi. I divide by pi. If I divide this side by 20 pi, what do I have to do to this side? Same thing. So now 500 over 20 pi equals r squared. Because that's all that's left here, right? How do I get rid of a squared? I square root. If I square root one side, what do I do to the other side? Square root. So r equals the square root of 500 over 20 pi. To do that on your calculator, of course, you do 500 divided by 20 pi and then square root the answer. Is everybody good? You guys are going to try this one. Volume of a sphere. Volume equals 4 pi r cubed over 3. You know the volume is 7,602. 4 pi r cubed over 3. I need to get to r. How will I get rid of divided by 3? I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. That's going to give me a number here, isn't it? I'm not going to do that with my calculator. I'm going to do all my math first. So now I have 3 times 7,602 
equals 4 pi r cubed, correct? How do I get rid of times 4 and times pi? Divide by 4 pi. They're gone. Divide that side by 4 pi. Now I have 3, 7,602, divided by 4 pi equals r cubed. Well, if r squared gets rid of with a square root, what would get rid of a cube? A cubed root. And now that would be done. A great many of you probably don't know how to do that on your calculator. That is no big deal. Everybody good? And then we are going to skip down to the bottom to number six, because this is the most important part for trig. My job here is to get x by itself, yes? So how do I get rid of divided by four? Multiply by four. So x equals... 23 times 4, which is 92. X is on the bottom. Do we want X in the denominator or do we want X by itself? I want X by itself, so it can't be in the denominator. So how do I move something out of the denominator? I multiply. Multiply this side by X. If I multiply the left by X, what do I got to do to the right? Same thing. 5X equals 60. Now, how do I get rid of this 5? Divide by 5, divide by 5. X equals 12. Now, this should see, you should right away see a shortcut. When the number's on the bottom, what did we do? Multiplied, 4 times 23. When the number was on the top, what did we do? We ended up doing 60 divided by 5. Does everybody see? It's a quick and easy shortcut. This is what you're actually doing, though. Is everybody good? Or do I need to assign a page of algebra? Please say no. Everyone can do algebra? Great. Try the question right above it, because you got eight minutes left in class, six minutes left in class. See if you can solve that. A equals... 2x plus 4. And I'm saying solve for x. That means you have to get x by itself. But there's still another letter there. That letter isn't going away. You have to move this around till x is alone. Try it. You got six minutes to figure it out. Remember, in algebra, anytime you have to get rid of something, you have to do the opposite thing that is shown. Would anybody like the magic pen to show how to do this? Okay. If you're sure. If you think you can do it, touch your nose. There's a few people touching their ears. I don't know if that means that they think they can partially do it. Okay, we are running short on time, and I would like to make sure the chairs get up. What is in the way of X being alone right now? There's the two. 
the square root, and the plus 4. What's the furthest thing away from x? The 4 is trapped under the square root. Square root. How do I get rid of a square root? I square it. If I square this side, what do I do to the other side? Square it. So now a squared equals 2x plus 4. Now what moves? 4. a squared minus 4 equals 2x. Now what? Divide by 2, divide by 2. Cancel. x equals a squared minus 4 over 2. You should be able to do that already. Even if you just finished grade 9, you should be able to do that. That is the level. That is the level of algebra that you must be comfortable with to succeed in the 10th grade. Okay? Now, the bell is indeed about to ring. It is 123 by my watch. Everybody who has their butt in a chair, put it up. Not your butt! The chair! Put the chair up! Because what I just said there was bad grammar. Everybody who's got their butt in a chair, put it up. That would mean the butt was the antecedent and you would put your butt in the air. Don't put your butt in the air. Put the chair in the air. It's like saying before you give a baby its bottle, you have to boil it. Not the baby, the bottle. That was recorded too, Avian. Maybe that's why I get classified as comedy. <laughs> <laughs>